So in the previous lecture, we have seen how to calculate symmetry adapted linear combinations of uh, 1s orbitals of hydrogen for water molecule. So let us now take one more example so that the method is very, very clear in our heads. So let's start. So what we will do is we will take another example to again develop SALCs using 1s orbitals only and then we will go to more complex example where we will be dealing with 2D representations. So let's start with the so SALCs belonging to sigma bonding in C2H4. Okay, so what we will be doing here is we will be calculating using 1s orbitals of the four hydrogen atoms. Okay, so first and foremost thing is to orient the molecule. in Cartesian coordinate system. That way it will be easier to operate symmetry operations onto this. So this is done. So now how do we draw this? So we have X, Y and Z and so you have CC double bond which will be lying along the Z axis and we will have four hydrogens, right? Like this. Okay. So now, if you do that, uh, we can give one s each one s orbital as some nomenclature. So, for example, let this be called as sigma one, sigma two, sigma three, and sigma four. So now, the second step is so identify the point group so i'm not going to go into all the details i will just uh, skip the steps which we all we have already learned so identify the point group of this molecule and to know the point group we should list down all the symmetry operations and find out the point group so you know all the steps here so i'll just directly write the answer here so this will be d2h point group because there is one c2z and then two perpendicular c2s which is c2x and c2y so this goes to d category and then there is a sigma h plane well in this case it will not be called as sigma h but it will be called as sigma x sigma y and sigma z but there is one plane which is perpendicular to the principal axis and hence it will be called as d2h point group right so Let's not go into those details. We have already discussed this molecule itself before. Now what we'll do is use the four 1s orbitals of hydrogens as a basis and develop a representation under d2h point group so when i say that what do i mean so that means i'm going to find out the matrix representation under all symmetry operations all right so now let us list down the symmetry operations we have. So this is D2H and what we are trying to do is we are trying to create tau sigma. Okay? Sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, sigma 4. And the first is E, then we have C2Z, then we have C2Y, C2X, then we have, what else do we have here? We will have I think I will be there. Yeah. Two. Then you have 
sigma x sigma y sigma z right? anything else which i'm missing no i think that will be all oh, uh, sigma this will be sigma x y y z z x right okay so now we need using uh, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 4, 3, sigma 4 as the basis that we need the matrix representation under all of these symmetry operations. So to do that, we need to operate E onto, let's say if we do that, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, sigma 4. And what is the resultant of this? Resultant is same, sigma 2 sigma 3 sigma 4 so this would imply that my e is a unitary matrix of order 4 right let's do the same thing for next operation let's say c2z operation So if I do sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, sigma 4, and if I do a C2Z operation, what is the resultant which I'm going to get here? So C2Z applied on sigma 1, that will give you sigma 4. So I'm rotating around this anti-clockwise. So that means sigma 1 and sigma 4 will be replaced and sigma 2 and sigma 3 will be replaced, right? So sigma 2 will be replaced with sigma 3. So sigma 2 is going to sigma 3. Sigma 3 is going to sigma 2. Sigma 4 is going to sigma 1, right? So this would imply that my C2Z has a matrix representation which can be written as 0, 0, 0, 1 then you have 0, 0, 1, 0. Then you have 0, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0, 0. So now you can try yourself by doing this multiplication with this and see if you are getting this, right? So basically what I have done is I have placed 1 over where sigma 1 is going to its new position so sigma 1 is going to sigma 4 so i have placed 4 over here now sigma 2 that is the second row sigma 2 is going to uh, sigma 3 so i have placed 1 here similarly sigma 3 is going to that's third row is going to second position so sigma 2 so that's why in second column i have placed 1 and sigma 4 is going to sigma 1 right so let us see that uh, more carefully with other operations also so that it is very very clear so again sigma, let's say if we are now applying c2x so you have sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 sigma 4 what happens here if we do this so if we do this let me go back to the molecule again so now we are rotating about this right so that means now sigma 1 will go to sigma 3 sigma 2 will go to sigma 4 right so sigma 1 is going to sigma 3 sigma 2 is going to sigma 4 and sigma 3 is going to sigma 1 and sigma 2 right so this implies that my c2 x is so now, now my c2 x is so sigma 1 is going to sigma 3 so that means i will put 1 at third position now sigma 2 is going to sigma 4 so i'll put 1 at fourth position sigma 3 is going to sigma 1 so i'll put 1 here and sigma 4 is going to sigma 2 so i'll put 1 here right so this is very very clear and you can again test it by multiplying this with this and then you should get the resultant matrix okay so similarly so let's not do this all over again so i'll just write down the matrices for c2y and rest of the operand uh, symmetry operations so i will have 0 1 0 0 then i have 1 0 0 0 then i have 0 0 0 1 
and I have 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay. And then for i, this will be. So whatever is replaced with what? So you have 0, 0, 1, 0. And you have 0, 0, 0, 1. You have 1, 0, 0, 0. And you have 0, 1, 0, 0. Similarly, you have for sigma x, y, which will be. So I suggest you all do this by yourself uh, so that it is very, very clear. Otherwise, uh, by just looking at it, it will not go into very deep. Okay, so 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So why we are writing these matrices, I will tell you. We Finally, we need the trace of this. You have zero, 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 one. Okay, so now that we are done writing all the matrix representation, what we have to do is we have to find out the trace and put that trace here. That will give us the reducible or irreducible representation, right? So now let's uh, write the trace. So trace for E is going to be 4. Trace for C to Z is going to be 0 because all the diagonal elements are 0 here. Then C to Y also it is 0. C to X also it is 0. I will be 0. Sigma XY will be 0. Sigma YZ will be 4. And Sigma XZ will be 0. Right. So this is what we have got as the reducible representation now. So before we actually go to fourth step, let me give you a way of writing directly the traces without having to write all the matrices. So easier way to write traces without But you should know how to write the matrix okay so that if it comes to that you should be able to do that but there is actually no need to write the full matrix and then find out the trace there is a much easier way you can just look at it and write it i will just tell you without writing the matrix matrix representation for each symmetry operation Okay, so the the method is basically uh, it's a thumb rule. So I will just quote that any basis function that moves under symmetry operation. contributes nothing to the trace or character otherwise it contributes one okay so let us see that again what do i mean by that so when i apply e on the basis function none of the basis functions move that means all of them will contribute one for the trace that will give you trace four if i do c to z all four will move that means they will not contribute anything towards the base towards the character or trace so the trace will be zero again everything will move here everything will move here 
everything will move here everything will move here now sigma yz if you carefully look sigma yz is the plane which is the molecular plane here right so if we do sigma yz sigma 1 stays where it was sigma 4 stays where it was sigma 3 and sigma 2 stays where they were right so that means none of this move so that is they contribute one towards the trace so that character under sigma yz will be four and rest everything will be zero except e right so this is much easier way so now next is to to calculate the A reducible representation or uh, irreducible representation so step number four is reduce tau sigma to its component irreducible representations using reduction formula so at this point, I don't think I need to remind you what is the reduction formula. You should be well aware of this. So by reduction formula, and I'm not going to do this that calculation either. So look back to previous notes and see what is the reduction formula and how do I use that to reduce sigma tau sigma into the following. So if I do that, I will get a g plus uh, b three g plus B1U plus B2U. So I have got four representations. There were four basis sets, so four 1D representations will uh, you will get. So and so the linear combination of this will be tau sigma to which the four sigmas are forming basis of. So now fifth step is to apply projection operator so aim is to find out the linear combination which will have these four symmetries right so apply projection operator for each of the ir representation obtained in step 4 so you don't have to consider all the IR representation of T2H point group. You have to consider only those which are coming as a result of reducing this reducible representation, which was in turn formed using sigmas, four sigmas as the basis. Okay. So only those representations you have to consider. Other representations, even if you consider, they will turn out to be zero. So there would not be any contribution coming from other representations. We can test it out if you want to. Okay, so each of the representation to any of the basis set function. So what do I mean? So let's say if I want to uh, find out what is the linear combination of the basis which has symmetry as AG. So I will apply projection operator corresponding to AG onto sigma 1. Okay, so you can choose any of these basis function. They will give you all same result. So it does not matter if you start with sigma 1 or sigma 2 or sigma 3 or sigma 4. Okay. So now what do I have here? So remember that the formula is L by H. So L is uh, the dimension of uh, this representation, which is 1. And H is 8 here. That's the order of the group. Then what you have to do is you have to take out from the character table what is the character under ag representation that is 1 into e symmetry operation effect of e onto sigma similarly 1 into c to z sigma 1 plus so the ag is a totally symmetric representation so all the characters are going to be 1 so that's why i don't have to look at the character table here but for other symmetry operations other uh, ir representations you will have to look at the character table c2 y applied on sigma 1 plus 1 into c2 x applied on sigma 1 
plus 1 into i applied on sigma 1 plus 1 into sigma xy applied on sigma 1 plus 1 into sigma yz applied on sigma 1 and so on sigma zx applied on sigma 1. So again uh, it is not required for me to do this complete calculation for you so you can I'll just give you a couple of solutions. So if you do apply E on sigma 1, you will get sigma 1. If you apply C to Z on sigma 1, so let us again look back. So if you apply C to Z on sigma 1, you will get sigma 4, right? Similarly, if you apply C to X on sigma 1, you will get sigma 3. If you apply C to Y on sigma 1, you will get sigma 2 and so on, right? So the resultant of this is going to be 1 over 4 sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 plus sigma 4 okay and this upon normalization you can write this as 1 by 2 sigma 1 plus sigma 2 remember we need to develop orthonormal sets Okay, so this has to be normalized. Sigma 3 plus sigma 4. So this linear combination would form basis for AG representation and this is going to be normalized, right? Okay. Now let us calculate for rest of these. So what you have to do is you have to do the exact same thing. So for B3G applied on sigma 1. Again, you can choose any of the basis function over here. Now, if I do that, what I get here is, again, I'm not going to repeat all of this, but here you have to read out the characters from character table, okay? So, now if I do this, I will get sigma one minus sigma four minus sigma two plus sigma three, plus sigma 3 minus sigma 2 minus sigma 4 plus sigma 1 okay so again after normalization and cancellation what you will get is 1 by 2 sigma 1 minus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 minus sigma 4 okay so now this one is also normalized and this linear combination Although it is coming from the same s orbitals of hydrogen, but the linear combination will have symmetry as of B3G. Okay, so this will transform as B3G. This linear combination will transform as AG, and these two sets will be orthonormal to each other. Which is uh, we know that the irreducible representations are orthogonal to each other, right? So similarly because these these are forming basis for two different ir representations so they will have to be orthogonal to each other we can also test the normality or orthogonality condition which is if you take the the coefficients of this four sigmas and then uh, multiply with each other and take the sum over all coefficients you will you should get zero so that is if i take one into one plus 1 into minus 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 1 into minus 1 right so the summation of the product is going to be 0 that means these two representation or these two linear combinations are orthogonal to each other they are also normalized so we have what we have got is orthonormal sets of linear combination so that's why it is called as symmetry adapted linear combinations because we now we know the symmetry of these linear combinations okay so let us finish this quickly. I'm just going to write the answers and I expect that you go back and complete this yourself. Okay. So for P, B1U applied on sigma 1, what you will get is 1 by 2 sigma 1 minus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 plus sigma 4. Now this will be orthogonal to the first one as well as the second one, okay? 
and similarly if i do p1 p of b2u on to sigma 1 what you will get is half sigma 1 plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 minus sigma 4 okay so you started with four basis functions uh, and you have got four linear combinations of those basis functions which are now defined by a particular symmetry this is what our aim was and we will see that this is very very useful when we go to the next topic which is chemical bonding okay so so far what we uh, have been doing is we have been looking at representations which are only one dimensional representations so let us also see how to develop uh, SALCs where 2D representations are involved. Okay, so let's take an example. So I'll say I'll just put a line over here. So SALCs involving two D IR representation, and the example I'm taking here is PTCL four. Now the first step is to orient the molecule about the axis in the Cartesian axis. So we have central atom which is at the axis and then you have Cl here, Cl here and you have Cl here and Cl here. Now the next step is to know the to identify the point group so point group here is t4h right that is very simple to see also let us list down the symmetry operations of t4h so you have e we have 2c4 then we have c2 2c2 primes and 2c2 double prime we have i 2s4 then we have sigma h and we have two sigma v's then we have two sigma d's okay so now let us quickly write down the reducible representation using the sigmas four sigmas of chloride atom as the basis okay so this is d4h and this is my tau sigma okay i will label it as sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 sigma 4 okay now if i apply e all four sigmas uh, will remain at their position so that means the character will be 4 if i apply c4 all four will change their position so the character will be 0 if i apply c2 here again all four will change this c2 is collinear with c4 so sigma 1 goes to sigma 3 and sigma 2 goes to sigma 4 and so on so c2 under c2 also it is going to be 0 so 2 c2 prime now this c2 prime is 1 along x axis and along y axis so in one of the c2 primes at least two chloride atoms will not move so that means it is going to contribute to 2 towards the trace or character Right. For the other C2 prime also, it is going to be 2. So the trace is going to be 2 for both of them. The matrix will be different for the two C2 primes. Okay. Now for two C2 double primes, now these C2 double primes are running in between X and Y axis. So the trace is going to be 0. I, the trace is going to be 0. S4, again, it's going to be 0. Sigma F H, it's going to be 4 because nothing will change. Two Sigma Vs. It's going to be 2, 2 sigma d's, it's going to be 0, right? So without having to write the full matrices, full matrix representation for each of the symmetry operation, what we have done is we have very quickly written by just looking at what s orbital moves under what symmetry operation and so on and so forth. Okay. So now again using reduction formula, we will reduce this to component IRs using reduction formula 
we get tau sigma is equal to we will see a1g plus b1g plus eu now you see that these two are 1d representations so the solution using this uh, next we have to apply projection operator using this onto any of the sigmas which we have seen already and it is very easy to do but now we will see how do we get this when we apply projection using eu okay so let's uh, go step by step i will not be solving the complete thing but i'll just write down the answers and i expect that you will go back and solve it a1g so i apply a1g onto sigma 1 and the result is sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 plus sigma 4 okay and of course you can normalize it to get half over here similarly for b1g on to sigma 1 what do you get is half of which is the normalization constant and you will get sigma 1 minus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 minus sigma 4 okay so because these are 1d representations one one dimensional ir representations so projection operator will give you only one linear combination whereas if you use this for projection operator you should get two linear combinations because this is two dimensional representation right so now if i do this p eu i apply projection operator onto sigma one what do i get i will get and again i expect you to do this yourself so you will get sigma one minus sigma three so do this complete calculation which you know the formula and and the normalization constant will be one by root two now okay so sigma one minus sigma three now how do we get the second linear combination which will also have the same symmetry as eu okay so there are different methods for this uh, but there is no unique method to solve this so what you can do is you can either apply p eu onto sigma 2 and see what you get sometimes you may get a second linear combination sometimes you may not get the second linear combination and what you will get is the sim is simply the the previous uh, the the first first linear combination which you got when you applied this on sigma 1 so when when i do this i do get a linear combination which is sigma 2 minus sigma 4 and i know that this is going to be orthogonal to the previous one sigma 1 minus sigma 3 okay so I do get this and both of them will have same symmetry as EU and uh, but in certain cases you don't get two unique linear combinations and in those cases what you have to do is so I'll just write down for a 2D IR representation we must get two orthogonal you can of course normalize them so that's why it is orthonormal orthogonal functions which jointly form basis for the representation so these two together will jointly form the basis for eu representation now first is uh, as usual so first is applied first is obtained by first linear combination is obtained by applying projection operator on one of the basis function
now for second there is no unique way of doing that in different point groups you will see that you will have to adopt different methods but uh, we recall that any member of the basis function basis functions or you can say basis set like sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 sigma 4 all forms function must be affected by by the symmetry operations of the group in one of the following two ways the first is the basis function will go into plus minus one times itself that means if you apply uh, the symmetry operations onto this one sigma one you will get either plus sigma one or minus sigma one. that is one of the ways and the second way is the basis function will go into another member of the set or a combination of members so what do i mean let's say if i apply any symmetry operation on sigma 1 it will either turn into plus 1 plus sigma 1 or minus sigma 1 or it will go into any linear combination of uh, rest of the members including sigma 1 right so uh, let us see an example for this one let's see if i if i am applying e on to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 it gives me plus 1 times sigma 1 minus sigma 3 right if i apply c2 on sigma 1 minus sigma 3 i will still get so let's uh, say this if i do c2 then sigma 1 will be replaced with sigma 3 and sigma 3 will be replaced with sigma 1 right so that means it is minus 1 times sigma 1 minus sigma 3 right so minus one times okay so that is plus minus one times so this is not very informative because you are getting the same function back and similarly if you keep on doing this so if you see c2 prime i sigma h sigma v all of this will give you either uh, plus one of sigma one minus sigma three or minus one of sigma one minus three sigma three so it will give you plus minus one times sigma 1 minus sigma 3 so not very informative this is not very informative right now let us see that quickly if we apply however if we apply c4 on to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 what do we get we will get sigma 2 minus sigma 4 similarly if you apply c2 double prime on to this you will get sigma 2 minus sigma 4 similarly s4 on to this you will get again the same thing and sigma d on to this you will get the same thing 
okay so this is the second orthogonal linear combination that was required so all it has to do is it has to fulfill the orthonormality condition with the the first one so the first one is obtained directly by applying projection operator second one can be obtained by applying projection operator onto an alternate basis function out of that set only or what you can do is you can apply different symmetry operations onto the first function which is first linear combination which is obtained and see if you get a second linear combination or not okay so this way there is no unique way of doing it because the number of uh, equations are less and uh, the unknowns are more so that's why we need to go for hit and trial and this is how it is done so as and uh, when we come into this kind of trouble we will see that there can be more unique ways of finding degenerate linear combinations so these are two degenerate linear combination because they form jointly basis for eu representation right okay so here we wanted to have two representations two linear combinations and we have got two so there is no need to go for further calculations here and i would suggest you to take a molecule take this as a home assignment SALCs where you will develop SALCs for a 3D representation where you should get a 3D representation try to pick up some molecule which has tetrahedral or orthogonal octahedral symmetry and see if you find a 3D representation and you can get three linear combinations which will jointly form basis for a 3D representation is left as an exercise okay so that is all for today and uh, next class onwards we'll be discussing chemical bonding all right thank you very much <laughs>